Hi, welcome to lesson seven in our science as a verb unit. This is going to talk about graphing. I really like this infographic, so I figured I'd put it up here. This is from the work that was originally done by Kurt Vonnegut for a failed master's thesis where he thought that he could graph the dramatic action in different stories in order to figure out different kinds of story archetypes. A really cool artist has taken these and sort of dressed them up a little bit for the purposes of this infographic. I've left the link down in the source for the video. I would totally encourage that you go and check it out because I think it's really neat. We're not actually going to be graphing happiness over the course of stories in this class, but we are going to be creating a lot of graphs. So it's important that we have a good handle on what we're expected to do when we make graphs. The first thing that we should really get a handle on is this notion of independent variables and dependent variables. Here's the way that works. The independent variable is the thing that is manipulated directly by the experimenter. Sometimes it could be the thing that the experimenter just allows to be changed. Time is often an independent variable. The dependent variable is the condition of our experiment that changes due to the manipulation of the independent variable. If we were going to investigate the effect of light on plant growth, we would probably vary the amount of light. That would be the independent variable. The amount of plant growth, however we define that, would be our dependent variable. Please take a moment and make sure you're clear on these before we go on, because we're going to use them again quite a few times over the course of this video. When we're constructing a graph, it's important that we pay attention to all of the elements that should go into the graph. The first is the x and the y axes, of course. The independent variable is always going to go on the x axis, and we should put our units as well listed underneath them. The dependent variable is always going to go on our y axis, again, with units. We're then going to put in a numerical scale that's going to represent uniform increases in each variable. As you can see here, we have uniform increases in each of the variables given. Each box is equal to an increase of one. It doesn't have to be equal to one. It will often be equal to five or 10, but it's really important to make sure that every box is equal to the same amount. Coincidentally, even though you don't see it here, your graphs do not have to start at zero. If you do not have zero data, it's totally okay to start your graph at the bottom most value for your range and go from there. We're going to give our graphs a title. You can be creative with your titles if you want, but if you're not creative, you can just go with dependent variable versus independent variable. That's totally fine and will work for almost every graph that you ever create, both in this class and in other classes. We're then going to plot our points. We're going to take care to make sure that we put our points in the correct places, and then we're going to circle our points with what we'd call point protectors. The Regents is always going to ask you to do this, so I'd like you to get in the habit of doing it on things where we're going to graph in class, both on labs and in class activities. When we get to the point of connecting our data points, we've got a couple of different options. I've shown you three of them here. We see a graph with no data points connected. That's just what we call points only. Or we see a graph with straight lines connecting our data points. And the last one we see is what we call the best fit line. Here's what I would like you to take away from this. For our graphs that we're going to create in class, the only things I ever really want you to do are to use data points without connections or to connect the points. I never want you to use a best fit line unless I absolutely tell you that you should or if I'm letting you use a computer program. For real graphs, best fit lines are almost always created using a computer program because the mathematics that's involved in determining them is a little bit complex. Another thing that we should be aware of is the relationship between interpolation and extrapolation. Here are two of the same graph. On the graph on the left, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be reading information from in between our points. The graph on the right, we're going to extend the trend outside of our points and get information from that. I'd like you to take a moment and jot down which one you think is interpolation and which one you think is extrapolation, and then we'll get the big reveal. So when we read data from in between our points, that is interpolation. When we read data from outside of our data points by extending the trend line, that is extrapolation. The only other thing that I want to talk about here are variable relationships. Here are two of the major variable relationships that you'll see in this class and in science in general. In the first one on the left, as one variable goes up, the other variable also goes up. Or as one goes down, the other one also goes down. That's what we call a direct relationship. In the second one, we see a very interesting relationship where as one variable increases, the other decreases, but they have a specific relationship. As one variable is doubled, the other variable is halved and vice versa. This gets this curving shape, which is very typical of what we'd call an inverse relationship. Please take a moment and clear up the confusion between indirect and inverse relationships. An inverse relationship is this very specific relationship. An indirect relationship is not a term that we'll basically ever use in this class to describe the relationship between two different variables. 
That's all that we have to talk about in this video. Please take a moment and make sure that you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can construct a graph according to the standards that we've discussed in this presentation, giving it a title, labels, scaling your axes correctly, and plotting your points appropriately. Also make sure that you can interpolate and extrapolate information using a graph if you're asked to construct one. Finally, take a moment and make sure that you can identify the relationship between two variables as either direct or inverse, depending upon the shape of the relationship that you see on a graph. That's it. I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can always bring them to class or you can get in touch with me by leaving comments on the video or contacting me through the information in the info field. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take it easy.